If you're looking at adding a BYD solar battery to your solar system, then you'll want to watch this video first. Solar batteries are not a one-size-fits-all, which is one reason why BYD's modular and expandable solution can be an excellent option. But even though you can simply add more batteries down the track, if you get the wrong combination of BYD batteries and inverter, it'll either be an expensive or impractical upgrade. Hi, I'm Mark from MC Electrical in Brisbane, and by the end of this video, you'll know better how to pick the correct size BYD solar battery that'll match your budget and expectations. And you'll know how better to choose the correct size battery that's easily able to be scaled into a larger system down the track so that you don't end up with solar battery buyer's remorse. By the way, if you're deciding between a BYD battery and a Tesla Powerwall, stick around because at the end of this video, I'll get to that topic. Now, first let's talk about what modular means. Now, each of these modules here is around about two and a half kilowatt hours of storage. So basically you stack a bunch of modules together like this to make up the size of battery that you want. So you'll need a base for the bottom to just to lift it off the ground and a battery conditioning unit at the top or a BCU. So you make sure that battery modules don't run too hot or too cold. If in a few years later, you want to increase the size of battery, then you can just add more modules to make the stack higher and you can also add another stack of modules beside it if you want to. But that's gonna be a little bit more expensive and I'll give you an idea of pricing later. But it's not just about how much storage you might want. You'll also wanna know how fast you can charge off excess solar and how fast you can discharge the battery at night and how the battery works in a blackout and how practical each system is to upgrade if you wanted to put another module on it. Okay, I've put together this BYD battery sizing guide so that you don't end up installing a battery that lets you down when you need it the most. But before I explain the sizing guide, if you don't know the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours, then check out this video for a really simple explanation. Okay, let me explain the guide. If we look on the left here, we can see two different types of BYD batteries, the HVS, and the HVM. Think of HVS as a small battery and HVM as medium. The HVS battery modules run on higher voltage, so we can only stack between two and four modules per stack, giving you a maximum of 10.2 kilowatt hours of storage. The HVM battery modules are a lower voltage battery, so we can stack anywhere from four to eight modules per stack, giving you a maximum of 22.1 kilowatt hours of storage per stack. Now on the top row is a list of Fronius inverters that work with the BYD battery. You might be wondering why I chose Fronius over maybe Goodwee or SunGrow. <laughs> well, because experience. Any little perceived advantage on spec sheet that these inverters have, like maybe change over time, will not make up for the difference in performance and quality of the Fronius Gen 24 and its pairing, its communication with the BYD battery. Now we can talk more about that down in the comments if you like. Okay, let's get back onto the sizing guide. This whole chart is really just a summary of three limitations. Number one, the limitation on how many BYD battery modules you can stack together. Number two, the limitation of each battery to charge and discharge. And number three is the limitation of each inverter that it's paired with to charge and discharge. So how many modules can you stack together? Now let's have a look at the top row. Let's say you choose to go with a small five kilowatt hour battery like this fella. This is the cheapest system and I'll give you an indication of pricing at the end of this video. And I'll also explain how much it'll cost to upgrade by putting an extra module on to a 7.7 .7 kilowatt hour battery. But you might be able to see the issue with this battery. The only way you can go bigger than 7.7 .7 is to install a completely new stack of batteries. These little squares down here indicate that you can add up to three stacks. But that involves the extra cost of another BCU and a whole lot more work installing it. So if you are thinking of expanding, you may want to install an 11 kilowatt hour battery to start with, and then you can easily expand to up to 19 kilowatt hours of storage. Okay, now let's move on to the 10 kilowatt hour Fronius Primo Inverter, and let's say we install a 7.7 .7 kilowatt hour battery. Now let's explain the figures in the box. The first figure is how fast the battery can charge and discharge. So at night or in a blackout, your battery will be limited by discharging at 6.7 kilowatts. Now, if you need to use more power than this, then you'll either need to get that power from the grid or from your solar panels if it's daytime. Now, remember, this is also how fast the battery can charge. So at lunchtime, if your solar is 
cranking and you have eight kilowatts of excess solar, not all of that will go to your battery. It'll be limited to charge at a rate of 6.7 kilowatts. The extra power in that case will just be fed back to the grid. Okay now, but let's say you're in a blackout, but the sun is out, so the solar is working. Well, you can draw a maximum of 6.7 kilowatts from your battery, but you can also draw more power from your solar panels and your inverter. So you'll now just be limited to the output of the inverter. In this case, it's 10 kilowatts. Now the squares below just mean that you can add up to three separate stacks, but that's a more expensive way of doing it. So maybe you should have chosen the 11 kilowatt hour HVM battery to start with. Okay, here's the weird part of the sizing of the BYD battery. Let's step it up and get an 11 kilowatt hour HVM battery. Well, this battery will charge and discharge slower than the 7.7 .7 kilowatt hour HVS battery at a rate of 4.5 kilowatts. You might have the storage capacity, but the rate at which you can use that capacity will be limited. Now, if you want this battery to be able to charge and discharge faster, then you'll need to upsize the stack of your HVM battery. Now let's get onto the Fronius Simo inverters. These inverters can only be used if you have three phase power at your home. So you'll need to check that out first. We'll look first at the 10 kilowatt hour Simo and we'll put a big 22 kilowatt hours of battery on it. I'll give you an indication of pricing at the end of this video, but this size is definitely bang for buck. The first figure now just shows us how fast the battery can charge and discharge at nine kilowatts. The second figure shows how much energy you can get from the solar and the battery combined, 10 kilowatts. And the third figure refers to how much you can get from each phase. Now notice every SIMO inverter is exactly the same, 3.68 kilowatts. So let's say you have a three phase inverter and you are running a large 3.6 kilowatt hot water system. And then you turn on an aircon, which just happens to be on the same phase. Now your battery can probably handle this amount of energy, but if you're running the system in a blackout, you'll be overloading that phase of the inverter and you will trip out on overload. Now, obviously the inverter will reset and your power will come back on, but you should know that you'll have to be more careful when you're in a blackout. But with a single phase Fronius inverter, everything will be on one phase and you can run up to 10 kilowatts on that one phase. But there are obvious downsides to having a 10 kilowatt single phase inverter. I'm hoping to get Dan from Fronius back in soon to talk about the new Fronius 10 kilowatt single phase inverter. And I'll link to that video up here when it comes out. Okay, let's get on to pricing. Now this is just a real ballpark of our current Brisbane prices, and it doesn't include the Fronius Gen 24 inverter. So a 5.1 kilowatt hour battery, the smallest one we can get, will cost you around about eight grand installed, but that won't include blackout protection. An 11 kilowatt hour BYD will cost you about 12 grand installed. And if you want us to come back at a later date to add another module like this one here, it'll cost you around about another $2,700 for one more 2.75 kilowatt hour module. Now a big 22 kilowatt hour battery stack, the tallest stack you can get, will cost you around about 20 grand. Now you can see the economies of scale working out here. Now the work required to give you blackout protection on any of these systems might cost you around another grand or so, depending on how complicated we wanna get. But to get a better and more up-to-date indication of your pricing, Google MC Electrical BYD pricing, or just check out the link in the notes below. And if you're wondering if a Tesla Powerwall might work better than the BYD, then check out this video here where I compare the two.